first of all, this formative is going to be out of 26. Go ahead and put that at the top of your paper right now. It's going to be out of 26. All right. So it's out of 26. So like I said, you got to get a 25 in order to get it to, to test out. Um, remember, Vienna, since you have a pencil out, you're not going to be you Okay. All right. Uh, number one, um, you know, these actually, I thought you guys are pretty good at this stuff right here. How many steps would I want to see, though? I would want to see two steps, so I really like it. And if you don't have this, please write it now. I mean, I just think I'm showing you specifically how I'd like it done. And I think if, if you didn't have this, write it down now so you know for the, for, for the summative. Um, what is the first step? We want to leave it a division problem. So what's really step one all about? It's really got something that I always say, Madison. Yeah, basically tur either turning the mixed number, but I like to just say it as turning them into fraction form, right? So I know that's going to be three fourths divided by, and then here we got to go around the barn. Just a little reminder here that you multiply your denominator by the whole. Okay, that's five, and then we add on that that one numerator there. So it's going to be six fifths, right? Then we do that algorithm, which is division is just multiplication by the divisor's reciprocal, which tells me that the dividend is going to stay exactly the same. Division is going to become multiplication, and the reciprocal of six-fifths is going to be five-sixths. Now, very important, what step do I want to do right here to ensure that, just to help me out a little bit. I mean, it's, it's just going to help me. Ash, I'm going to cross, I call it cross-simplifying because we are simplifying those fractions, essentially. Now, I look at 4 and 5. What factor does 4 and 5 share? They share 1. So is that going to help us ever to simplify? Nope. What about 3 and 6? Do they have any factors? By the way, if you didn't know that, could you go over and find the GCF of 3 and 6? Sure you could. I mean, if you wanted to take the time to do that, you could see, oh, they have a GCF of 3. So I can divide by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is? 1. 6 divided by 3 is? Now it's just the numbers are smaller. It's nice. So I do 1 times 5 is 5. 4 times 2 is 8. Or, yeah, 4 times 2 is 8. I know my answer is 5 eighths. That's in simplest form because the only factor that they share, 5 and 8 share, is 1, right? That's how you know something's in simplest form. So we know the correct answer was letter B. Okay? Is everybody understanding the work that I'm, what, that I'm wanting there? Okay, so that's learning target number one. So in your on your learning target notes, you'll see those lines underneath learning target one. You yes. put a check mark if you got it right. Put an X if you got it wrong. Can we do check mark on the paper too? You can. I don't care. You track it however you want on your paper. I mean, if you if you just want to just know, just try to keep track of which ones you miss so that you can practice those types tomorrow. Yes. Nope. If you didn't cross simplify. I'll show you. I'll just show you what it looks like. I like cross simplifying because the numbers are just smaller. Let me show you what I mean. So if you did top times top, bottom times bottom, you would get 15 twenty fourths. Okay. Now I didn't make that an answer, but I bet you if I'd have made that 15 twenty fourths, I bet you there'd be some people that would have put that. But because 15 twenty fourths wasn't listed, oh, that must be able to be simplified. So just be careful. I just think it's easier to see that three and six share a three than it is to see that 15 and 24 share a 3. Do you guys agree with that? The numbers are just a little smaller. So you could have done it this way. That's perfectly fine. But I think cross-simplifying, the numbers are just smaller. All right, number two. Same thing, um, you know, as far as, the, as far as the work goes here. We're going to do number one, number two. First step is just putting them in fraction form. So I'm going to go around the barn for both of these. That's going to be four-thirds. Leave it a division problem. And if you don't have this, you should be writing this. Okay. And that's going to be 6 times 3 is 18, plus 5 would be 23 over 6. Now we're going to do that algorithm, whereas we keep the dividend the same. Division is going to become multiplication. And the reciprocal of 23 over 6 is 6 over 23. Again, if you didn't cross-simplify, that's fine. But I think you're just getting into, you're, you're, you're making it harder for yourself. Up here, we realize that, that 3 and 6 had a factor of what? 3. 3. So let's go ahead and do that same thing here. Divide by 3 there, that's 1. Divide by 3 there, that's 2. What about 4 and 23? they have anything? No, because I know the only factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. Do any of those numbers divide 23 evenly? Except 1, of course. Um, so this doesn't and this doesn't. So we know that now we're just ready to multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. We end up getting 8 over 23. 
and that is in simplest form. I know that because 23 is prime, so the only factor they share is 1. So that is letter C. Okay, make sure you give a check or next on learning target 1 again. Okay, multiplying. Um, that says 0 and 3 tenths times 7. What problem would I want you to do here? 3 times 7, we get rid of that decimal. 3 times 7. We don't line it up. I still have some of you doing this. I still have people trying to do this, guys. You're just creating more work for yourself. Look, 0 times 0 is 0. Put your placeholder, 1. Guys, let's. we do not line up our decimals when we multiply. You're creating way more work for yourself and unnecessarily. Okay, we take the decimal out when we are multiplying. So now I know 3 times 7 is 21. You all have access to a multiplication chart, right? They're all around the room, and I told you guys you could use it in your agenda. This right here is a decimal, right? I see that there is one number to the right of the decimal, so I know 21 has to become 2.1, letter A. Any questions about that? Okay, we'll do the next one. Okay, what problem would I want you to do? I certainly wouldn't want you to do this. I would not want that. That just is you're you're asking for a mistake because you're you're creating more steps and more steps means more chance to make an error. Okay, so what problem, Morgan? You got it. Now, once you have it written, you can put them back in, but I don't even want to do that. I just want to do the problem. So, here we go. I'll try to switch colors up here. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 2 is 2. Pretty easy there, right? What do we have to put down here, though? That's very important right here. We've got to put that placeholder. That's representing this right here, where that 1 is, because we're 1 to the left of it, right? 7 times 4 is 28. Carry your 2. 7 times 3 is 21. Add on 2 is 23, right guys? 7 times 2 is 14, plus 2 is 16. Now we're ready to add, right? That's going to be 4. 3 plus 8 is 11, carry 1. 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 1 would be 6. And then you can just bring that down. You could put zeros there if you wanted to, but I know a lot of you don't. So, does everybody agree that 234 times 71 is 16,614. Yes. yes, it is. Absolutely it is. Now again, I have a feeling if I had to put a letter E here and made that letter E right there, some of you would have put that because you forget that last step. Remember, if we took those decimals out, we've then got to put them back in, or at least we got to account for them. So how many numbers up here in the problem did I have to the right of the decimal? I have three. One, two, three. So I need to move that decimal one, two, three, sixteen, and six hundred fourteen thousandths. Got it? Yes. Okay, make sure you give your check or next on learning target number five. That learning target obviously is multiplying decimals. Okay, multi-digit decimals. Okay, number, number five up here. Now we're doing division. Okay. All right. Um, I'll rewrite this problem up here. 0 0.89 divided by 0 0.4. What's the immediate red flag that should automatically be like 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 red alert, like telling you there's something the matter, Megan? Where? But this one. Can this one have a decimal? Not it, not for doing long division. If it's if it has one, you have to change it. This number can be a decimal all day long, right? That, that doesn't matter. But we have to turn this to what? What is that going to become? It is going to become 4. So math-wise, what did I just do to point 0.4? You moved the decimal. Yeah, I moved it, but what am I doing, though? we got to think in terms of times 10. Times 10, absolutely. Right? Because remember, when you multiply by 1 followed by zeros, that is just going to move the decimal to the right, however many zeros we have. So that's going to become the new number. It's going to become 4. But what do students maybe forget at this point then? Morgan? You have to do the same thing there, times 10. Okay. Right? So my new problem is going to be 8.9 divided by 4. Has everybody got that? All right. So now obviously you need to have work here. It's not like an optional thing. You had to have it. Watch how, see how I space out my numbers? I leave a little bit more space in there, guys. 
What's the importance of that decimal? Bring it up. Do you have this? Do you have this stuff? Because, guys, this stuff that I'm writing here might not be a bad thing to have. I mean, I know you probably know, but I'd be writing everything if I were you. Because I would just want to... Well, if you already have it, no. But, I mean, I just think the way I'm showing you here will kind of hold you accountable. It'll keep you remembering those little things that I know people mess up. Okay? So, the decimal goes straight up. How many times will 4 go into 8 or 8 be divided by 4? Davis? Oh, two times. We multiply around. Remember this? Does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers? So the first step, we divided. That's done. Now we multiplied and got 8. That's done. Now we subtract and got 0. That's done. Now we check. Remember, the check method is when we look at this difference. And we have to make sure it's smaller than that number, the divisor. If it isn't, if it's bigger or the same, if it's 4 or larger, then this number right here has to go up. Okay, so that's just a nice little check you can do. Now we're ready to bring down. We're going to bring down that 9. There we go. 4 will go into 9 two times again, right? Start the process over. 2 times 4 is 8. 1. Check and make sure it's smaller, is it? Yeah. Yep. So can I just stop there? Cool. Nope. We've got to add a 0. Did I change the dividend at all by making it 8.90? No. No, I did not. We bring that down. 4 goes into 10. Again, 2 times. Right, everybody? Um, we multiply around. We subtract, and we get 2. We got to bring down another zero. Can't stop until we, it terminates. Um, four will go into twenty-five times. We multiply around. Finally, we end it right there. So there's your work that would be needed. We know the answer is letter B. Okay. Everybody clear on this? What what, what I'm expecting here work-wise, guys? I can assure you that I certainly don't have the neatest handwriting in this room. Uh, the ladies in the room probably have the the neatest handwriting, and then guys, we're all together in this one. Okay, but right there, I think everybody would agree that's fairly neat, right? I kept everything pretty organized and neat. That's the biggest thing with long division. Okay, all right, next one, Nick. Um, and by the way, question like like this one, these questions are going to be so similar to on the summative. I mean, like we literally just changed the numbers on a lot of these. Okay, so Nick buys three and a half pounds of American cheese. The cheese costs two dollars and eighty cents per pound. How much does Nick pay for the cheese? Well. Here's what you have to identify. You have to, I'm going to remind you of this real quick. Part plus part equals whole. Part times part equals whole. Or whole divided by part equals part. Or whole minus part equals part. Okay? Remember we've talked about this, guys? You have to just ask yourself, what are they giving me? Are they giving me whole amounts? Am I dividing something? Am I, is it giving me the parts and asking me for the whole? Huh? It is asking for the whole. It's giving me just how much cheese I have and how much it costs per pound of cheese. Kind of like if I said, hey, I really like your shirt, Ragged. And she says, yeah, I, bought, I paid $10 for it. I paid $10 for my shirt. And I said, okay, I'd like to go buy that same shirt. I want a seven of them. It's for every day of the week, right? How would I figure out my total cost? I would do 10 times 7 because this is how much it costs for one. This is how many I have. This would be a part times a part, which would give me a whole, a total amount. Everybody got that? So this one, we are going to be doing multiplication. So we need to do 3.5 times $2.80. What are some things we could do here before, before doing the work here? What, what are some things we could do, guys? Layton? Sure. Get rid of it. That's fine. We can Even though money... You know, we have to make sure we put it back because money always goes to two places, right? But you can get rid of it just for the process here that we're doing. Sure. Um, what else could... Well, now what are we going to do? Davis? Um, get the zero on. You can put a zero on top and do left dividing. Beautiful. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Like he said, we, I, I, I've taught you over and over to get rid of the, get rid of the decimals. Now some of you are like, well, I don't really want to do it like this because that's going to be more steps, right? That first step is kind of a waste. So, yeah, multiplication is commutative, guys. You can absolutely put, Connor, you can absolutely put 280 on top. That's fine. Or, as uh, Leighton said right at the beginning, 
Could I just do 28 times 35? But that would just create more work for you. That's going to create a third step. We don't need a third step. So the one that I'm going to do here is I'm going to do this one. Okay, because that's the way I've taught you to do it from day one. Don't worry about taking zeros off, anything like that. I just want you to get rid of the decimals. So now we're going to multiply those out. 5 times 0 is 5. I'm sorry. What? Zero. 5 zero. times 0 is 0. 5 zero. times 8 is 40. 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 4 would be 14. Got to get rid of our carries. Got to put our placeholder. I even like to X this off just to remind myself that it's gone. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 8 is 24. Carry your 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Plus 2 would be 8. And then we add those up. We end up getting 9,800, right, guys? But we've got to put our decimals back. Now, here's where this gets kind of weird. Okay, so I need you guys to listen to this, please. This is what I want to make sure of. Because if you did this problem, then you have to, if you used the, the zero in, in $2.80, in $2 if you kept the zero there, then that's going to be account for how many places move, you got to move the decimal, right? So I have one, two, three numbers to the right of the decimal. <coughs> We're going to go one, two, three. Now that's not $9.800, is it? How much is it? $9.80. Okay, that would be the correct answer. But here's what I want to show you. Let's say you took that zero off of 280. Do you guys see how I did that? Okay, that's fine. Watch what it does. So I'll hurry and do this one. You end up getting this. Get rid of your carry. Get rid of that place. You end up getting that. Then you end up getting that. So now, because we did that, when we put our decimals back in here, it would be 2.8 and it would be 3.5, right? Now we only have two numbers to the right of the decimal. One, two. Do you see how it works? They're the exact same, but here's the deal. If you include the zero, then you got you got to make sure you count for it as being a number to the right of the decimal. If you take the decimal off, then you don't include it. Does that make sense? No. Why? No. Because no. we didn't include the zero in the problem. If, so you you got if you get rid of that's why I said I don't really like getting rid of that zero in that case. Because it's just gonna mess with you. Because what people are gonna do is they're gonna say, Oh, so I gotta move it three places. And get 98 cents. Now that answer wouldn't make any sense because one or three and a half pounds cost, or I'm sorry, one pound cost two dollars and eighty cents. Wait, so your answer is nine dollars and eighty cents. Yes, nine dollars and eighty cents. Okay. So my advice: don't take the zero off. Okay. I think it's just going to confuse you more. Okay. Don't take it off. Just just do it just like we've I've showed you. Get rid of the decimal. Move the decimal however many place numbers are to the right of the decimal. All right, next next two, um, just like I've been showing you, we got to show two steps. Yes. So we know this is going to be step number one. Step two, first step, put them in fraction form. So that's 7 over 1 divided by 1 fifth. This is going to become 7 over 1 times 5 over 1. We end up getting 35 over 1, which is in simplest form. Pretty easy there. No, not many of you really missed that question. But is everybody understanding the steps that I need to see? Yes. Yes. Um, do you need a first step for eight, step one? I mean, that's what I told you was supposed to be there. But, but, but I, so here's the deal. It's a formative. So I would say you better make yourself a note right now. I've said I want two steps. Always. The only time you do not have to have two steps is a question like number eight. This would be a one step. This is the only instance. The reason why there's only one step, are they already in fraction form? They're already in fraction form. So you don't have, I mean, if you wanted to do it in two steps, you would just basically be writing the same problem over again, wouldn't you guys? Right? So basically, it gives you step one. You now have to do the algorithm, okay? So that would be 5, 6 times 7 over 1. I don't see any cross simplifying there. I end up getting 35 over 6. Okay. Now that answer wasn't provided. So that told me. Can you pay attention, please? Thank you. 
that I need to convert it to a mixed number. Remember, we do that with law, with uh, division, but we don't. This when we do division like this, we don't include decimals or anything. We know in our head. That's fine. That's fine. Six goes into thirty-five five times. We subtract that difference, whatever you get, your remainder, that R5 is what it would have been called in elementary school. That becomes the numerator of the fraction. And then, of course, we never change the denominator. 5 and 5 6, letter D. Let me say this again. Guys, the, this is the only step you need on this one. I'm just showing you that all I did here was I just rewrote the problem. That's all it is. You didn't have to do that. I, that's what I'm showing. That's why I said the only step necessary here would be the second step. Make sense? Okay, at the bottom, I want everybody to put what they got out of 8. So however many you got correct out of 8. Here we go, page 2 now. Okay, guys, some of these word problems. Now we're getting into the ones where that, that I saw a lot of missed answers. A lot of missed answers on some of these on, the, on this page here. Okay, number nine, after a birthday party, there are three and a half pizzas left over. If the pizzas are divided, there's your key word, into one-fourth size slices, how many pieces of pizza are left over? Now, here's the deal. It's one of these two. It's either this or it is this. And this is where you guys have got to use your knowledge of what's being divided. I'm talking the object. Are we dividing up three and a half pizzas, or are we dividing up a one-fourth piece, like a, a piece that's one-fourth size? What's being divided here? Three and one half. The three and one half. Not because it's bigger. Don't think like that. It's being divided up because that's actually what's being cut up. We have this many pizzas. One, two, three, and then we have half of a pizza, right? Yes. That's what we have. Every one of these is going to be cut into four pieces. Your, your mom, your dad is going to get out a, a, a pizza cutter, and they're going to cut it into that size slices. So we could do it that way and just count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. But we are not doing it that way. That's just the understanding part of it. Okay? You had to show me how many steps. Two steps. This would not be right. It would be this one. And then you must show two steps. Again, I'd be writing this if you didn't have it. First step is put it in fraction form. So we're going to go around the barn there. That is going to be 7 over 2 divided by 1 fourth. And then it's going to be 7 over 2 times 4 over 1. Is there any cross simplifying that I can do here? Yes. Um, Layton? Uh, 2 and 4. What factor do they share? Two. They share a 2, so I'm going to divide by 2. We end up getting 14 over 1 which equals 14. There you go. If you wouldn't have cross simplified, you would have you would have uh, got this. You would have gotten 28 over 2 and then had to divide by 2 to top and bottom. Everybody got that? Okay. All right, number 9. So make sure again you're giving yourself a check or an X on learning target 2 there. Okay, keeping track of it. These are your word problems. Let's go over to number 10 over here on the right, guys. Um, Christina rides her bike 13 and 25 hundredths miles to and from her job each week. How many miles does she bike in all to and from her job in 29 weeks? This We just have to identify, is it giving me the parts? Or did it give me a whole? And I'd be doing division. What do you guys think? What is it giving me? Did it give me the parts or did it give me a whole and a part? Yep. Parts. It gave me the parts. It's the same kind of thing. It's giving me how far she travels to school, right? And then it's giving me how many weeks she's doing it for, which is then going to be able to identify how far she's going to travel total. How many total miles. So that is a whole. That's another word for whole, total. Okay? Um, we know the problem is going to be 13.25 times 29, but what problem am I going to have you guys do? What problem will you actually be doing here, Vienna? 1,325, 1, and we're going to multiply that by 29. Okay, 5 times 9 is 45. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 4 is 22. 9 times 3 is 27, plus 2 is 29. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 2 is 11. Get rid of your carries, right everybody? Get rid of that placeholder, or put your placeholder in, I mean. 2 times 5 is 10, carry 1. 
2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 would be 5. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 1 is 2. Now we're ready to add these up. That's going to be 5, 2, 14, and then that's 8, 3, right? Yeah. Is the answer to this question 38,425 miles? No, it's not. It's not that. The decimal and that's right there. Now we've got to go back and count up how many numbers to the right of my, in my original numbers, how many actual fraction numbers did I have? How many decimals to the right of the decimal? I had two, so we need to move that decimal. One, two to the left. So she's going to be traveling 384 and 25 hundredths miles. So that's letter C. Are we good? Yeah. Number 11. Put a big star next to it, guys. Oh. This was... I think either it was the most missed question on the test or the second most missed question on the test. Yeah. Okay? And here's the reason. What's the first alarm clock that went off? What's the red flag that jumped out at you right away? Morgan? So what they did, here's what a lot of students did. This, this is what everybody did. You guys noticed that, which was great. A lot of you said, oh, yeah, that's got to become 16. But then they proceeded to go down and do 64 divided by 16 and say, yep, four times, subtract, answers D. Is that correct? No. No, it's not. But it's, I understand why you made that mistake. What mistake was actually made there? And this is where I'd like to see you guys writing something because I know or many of you missed this. I know for, for a fact. Uh, Kyle. Okay. Right. Reagan. Um, the dividends, since you're taking out your decimal twice, first it's 10 because it divides your can be a decimal, then for 64, you have to add two zeros, and since it's a whole number, the decimal will be right after the 4. So you have to add two zeros and move it over twice. Did everybody see how I did that? Yeah. Guys, it'd be like if I took the fraction 1 half, and I said, yep, I'm going to make this 200. What did I do to my denominator? Add two zeros, so times 100. Times 100. Yeah. Times 100. And then you said, yep, I'm just going to keep that. Those are equal to each other. Are those equal to each other? Are those even close to the same amount of pizza? Not even close. So, guys, you've got to remember that all fractions are division problems, right? So, therefore, all division problems are also fractions, so to speak. So, you got to think about it like this. This is actually could be written like this, right, guys? Yeah. And if I went ahead and said, I'm going to make that 16, I'm multiplying by 100, right? Right? So what do I got to do to this? The same thing. And every number has a whole number, or I'm sorry, has a decimal after the number. So actually the problem is going to become 6,400 divided by 16. Everybody seeing how I'm doing that? Okay, now we, we did that first step. Now we're ready to bring down a zero. How many times will 16 go into zero? Zero. Zero times. Multiply around. Can I stop there and say, yep, the answer's 40? Okay. No, I still have numbers to bring down. i got to bring down everything. 16 goes into 0, 0 times. We subtract, we get 0. There's my answer, 400. And by the way, I'm just going to say this one more time. Because some of you are getting done in 25, 35 minutes. You have 25 minutes. If you have that much time on the summative left over, why not go back and say, you know what? Mr. Garrison told me that if this is the whole... And this is a part, which makes this a part, right? Shouldn't I be able to go back and do 400 times that? And shouldn't it give me 64? Yeah. Shane, you with me? So why not, if you have time, go back and say, yep, I'm going to do 400 times 0.16. Why not do that? If you actually did it, I won't right now, you would end up getting 64. You'd actually get this. You would get 64.00 or 64, 0, 0, and then you'd move it two places because of that 1, 2. See how I did that? Yes. Um, number 12 and 13, notice there are no learning targets. Didn't really know. There isn't really a, I can find the reciprocal of a number. It's just kind of part of learning target 1. So if you want to do that, if you want to do a check or an X there, um, reciprocals, remember, I know you guys just remember it as flip-flop, right? Yeah. But that's not the real definition of it. What's the real definition behind being a reciprocal of one another? Davis? Multiplied to get one. 
that the only way that you can ever multiply two numbers together and get one is if they are reciprocals of each other. Think about it. This would be 10 over 10, which would then equal 1, right, everybody? So the correct answer here would be 5 over 2. 5 over 2, yeah. Guys, you do not need the multiplication here. All that you needed was the answer, 5 over 2. I was just trying to explain to you what it is. Um, now, finally, reciprocal this one. This was a highly missed question, actually. Now, first of all, in order to ever be a reciprocal, first of all, do you have to put something in fraction form? Yes. So what? this is actually 4 over 1, right? Yes. So at, the reciprocal of it would be 1 over 4. Okay? All right, let's go to 14. Okay, a large bottle... A, whole, a large bottle of shampoo holds four liters of shampoo. A family uses three-fifths of a liter each day. How many days will the shampoo last? Obviously, this is division, right? So let me ask you, what's being divided? The amount that's used each day or the total, how much the bottle holds? How much the bottle holds? Again, whole divided by part equaling part. So this is going to be four over one divided by three-fifths. There's my step one. My step two then would be 4 over 1 times 5 over 3, which gives us 20 over 3. There is no cross simplifying, right? Hold on. Now we've got to convert that into a mixed number. So you would get, uh, it goes in there six times. We get a uh, remainder of two, six and two thirds. Now that's not how much, now remember, that's not how much shampoo. That's how much, how many days? Oh, well, yeah. But that three, actually, three-fifths is a lot. That's a lot of shampoo to use per day. But I guess if you're a big family. So does everybody understand the work I'm requiring there? Step one, fraction form. Step two, algorithm of division of fractions. Got it? Yeah. So the answer would be six and two-thirds there. I would. We always convert it to a mixed number because this doesn't really have any meaning. I, I don't really know how much 20-thirds days is. All right, number 15, I think. A baker uses six total. There's a key word. Is that another word for the whole, guys? Yes. Yeah. So, again, what's being divided? The, the total teaspoons of salt or the amount that's used for each roll? Total. The total, absolutely. So it's six over one divided by three-eighths. And that would be six over one times eight over three. Any cross-simplifying that can happen here? Uh, yeah. Three and six, make that one, make that two. We end up getting 16 over 1, which obviously equals 16. That's how many dinner rolls can be made each day. Sit up. Sit up. At the bottom, this page is out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Go ahead and put what you got out of 7 down here, please. Please put what you got out of 7. Thank you. Last page, guys. Okay? Um, this question, put another star by it, guys. This was the most missed question. And the reason why is because I put a lot of stuff in it. There's a lot of distractors. There's a lot of things that could confuse you. There's a lot of little pieces of information. You have to be very careful readers. It wasn't easy like the last couple that just, you know, it's like it gave you a number and another number. You just had to figure out what's being divided, right? Nick Tiberio had a pajama party with four football teammates. The five of them ordered one extra large pizza. They ate five-eighths of the pizza before the pajama dance-off. The next morning, they split the leftover pizza equally. How much pizza, pizza would each one of them eat if they all get an equal amount? So, here's the deal. I see a lot of numbers. I see the number five. I see the number four. I see the number five-eighths. I see all these numbers. My question I'm going to start with, what is being divided? Let's start there. What is actually being divided? Yes. Now, people say pizza, right? Hunter, are you with me? Yeah. I mean, I feel like you're not. The pizza. Now it is. He's absolutely correct. The pizza is absolutely being divided, but that doesn't really help me. Specifically, I need to get another word in front of pizza. What pizza are we talking about? The large pizza? The late? The leftover pizza. Everybody go in an underline or circle or highlight or something. The word leftover. Right there, there's your sentence. That's the whole key to the whole thing. If you miss that, that part in the sentence, did you underline that like I said? Okay, that's what's being divide, divided up, what's left over. They already ate five-eighths of it. Now, some of you might be like, well, how do I figure out how? 
what's five you could do one minus five eighths, right? And then you could figure out your common to not make that one over one, make this eight over eight, right? That's going to be three eighths. That's how much is remaining. Or you could think of it as a picture. So I have my pizza and it's cut into eight slices. I know that um, uh, right now I, I have they ate. I'll color them black if they're if they're gone. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. There's five. Whoops, my drawing wasn't very good. Right there. There's five. And then how many pieces would we have left over? We have three out of eight. That's what's being divided. Three eighths is being divided. Does everybody agree with that? That's what they're dividing up, what they have remaining. Now, what are they dividing it by? Five. What's the divide? Yeah. Five. Because there are five of them. Some people did three-eighths divided by four when I was looking through the clicker because they saw four up here. Well, if you did, if you got three 30 seconds, then yeah, you, you did do divided by four, but it's not just four sharing the pizza. It's the four friends and Nick. So five people. So this is going to be... 5 over 1, there's my, there's my first step. My second step is going to be then the algorithm, so 3 eighths times 1 fifth. There is no cross simplifying to be done there. We get 3 fortieths, that is our answer. Each friend is going to get 3 fortieths of a pizza. Of the, what's left over, I should say. Okay? I got 3 eighths because I know that the five friends, they ate five-eighths of the pizza before the pajama dance-off, right? So that's how much they ate. That was the night before. We're talking about, we're not dividing what they ate. So a lot of you also did this, five-eighths divided by five. I'm not saying they have that remaining. That's not what's being divided up. They ate that last night. That's gone. We only have this remaining, and that's what's being divided, okay? That question will be on the summative, so just know. Okay, uh, here's a division problem. Okay, so we have 1,687.5, and we divided that by 75. Right, everybody? Now, can, this, can there be a decimal in the dividend? Yes. Sure they can. We just got to move it straight up, right? Can 75 go into 1? Hello? No. Can 75 go into 16? No. Can 75 go into 168? Yes. Now, I think you guys were able to see that's 75 is a nice even number. 75 times 2 is 150. So um, I was able to figure that out. Notice I put that 2 directly above the 8 there. I subtract here and get 18. Now I'm going to bring down my, my 7. Again, I'm going to see that it's going to go in 2 times again because it's just not big enough to go in 3 times. I'm going to get 37. Now I'm going to bring down my 5. Now we finally got a number we might have to do a little work with. So maybe we do 75 times 5. Maybe we start there. 35, 37. Oh, we get it right on the first shot. 30, 75, 0. We know that's a 5. We're done. Now, again, if you're on the summative, you get done 20 minutes early. Let's not just go back to our seats and then twiddle our thumbs. Let's actually do something productive to try to enhance our grade. Take this number right here. 22.5 and multiply it times 75. Make sure that it gives you that. If it doesn't, you did something wrong. Okay? Um, adding decimals. What do we got to remember when we're adding and subtracting decimals? What do you have to do on adding and subtracting, Vienna? You have to line up your decimals. So, there we go. And what can I put right here? A zero. A zero. Okay. Five plus zero is five. Two plus... 8 is 10. What do I got to do with this decimal? Doesn't it come straight down? And there we go. 4 and 5 hundredths. Okay, here we go. 24 and 54 hundredths minus, what I like to do is right here, guys. When I'm doing these, I like to just put my decimal like in there right away. Then they're already lined up. Now I just put Oh, the number to the left must be under the 4. The number to the right of the decimal must be right there. i got to add a 0 there. Now we're ready to subtract. 4 minus 0 is 4. Can I take 9 from 5? No. No, so we got to borrow, right? Bring that decimal straight down. I'm going to borrow right there. That's going to give me 3 there. Turn this into 15. 15 minus 9 is 6, right? Wait, why did you do 15? Why not 14? Because, okay. Oh, you did borrow from the other. Okay. Now... I'm going to come over 
I, can I take five from three? I can take five from three. Okay, so now I'm going to borrow from here, make this one, which is going to make that 13. 13 minus five is eight. One minus zero. You could put a zero there if you wanted to. 18 and 6,400. Okay. Let's go up. Um, this question was a highly missed question, and I'm really not quite sure. I think it's just because it's a big number and there's a lot. I mean, everybody was close. There was nobody that was, like, way off. Everybody was right around, it's, I think the answer is right around 244 or something, 144. 144. It's, everybody was right around there. So, again, we're going to take the decimals out. So we are going to do the problem 2454 times 59. Right, everybody? 9 times 4 is 36. 4 times 5 is 45. Plus 3 would be 48. 4 times 9 is 36. Plus 4 would be 40. 9 times 2 is 18. Plus 4 would be 22, right? Right, everybody? So if you're noticing your mistake, I hope you're writing this to, or circling your mistake. A lot of it's just a multiplication or an adding error. Every time I look back, you're not really with me. That's a little bit frustrating. Five times, oh, i got to put my placeholder in there, right, to represent where that 9 is. Five times 4 is 20. Change colors so we can see this a little better. I'm going to carry my 2. 5 times 5 is 25, plus 2 would be 27. Carry my 2 here. Uh, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 2 is 22. And then 10, 12. Now I'm ready to add, oh, not a good line. I'm going to add these up. So I'm going to get 6, 8, 7, 4, 4, 1. I know the answer is not 144,786. I've now got to go back and count up my numbers to the right of the decimal. 1, 2, 3, and move it 1, 2, 3. There's our answer. 144 and 786 thousandths. Okay? All right. This question, guys, number 21. Okay? A coffee shop worker is putting 18.125, so 18 and 125 thousandths pounds of coffee into 0.25 pound bags. Whenever you hear bags, you're breaking something into groups. What operation are we talking about all the time? Division, right? So I know what's being divided. Is it the, is it the total pounds or the size of the bags? So this is going to be 18.125 divided by 0.25, right? What's the first red alert that you see? Red flag jumping out at you, screaming at you. Nate. Divisor can't be a decimal. So I've got to turn it into a whole number. So I've got to move it. One, two. Which means i got to do this. One, two. Copy right. The same question is going to be on the summative, guys. I can't, I can't make this any easier. And some of you just, plain and simple, aren't taking advantage of it. And it's a little bit disappointing. So this is going to be my new problem. 1,812.5. We're going to be dividing that by 25. Right, everybody? Here we go. Bring my decimal straight up. Be real neat with this. Here we go. Can 25 go, in, be, go into 1? 18. How about 181? Yes. yes, it can. It can go in seven times, right? No, eight times, right? Seven times, yeah. So notice I put that seven directly above the one. Okay, I'm going to get 175. When I subtract there, I'm going to get six. I'm going to check to make sure it's smaller, is it? I'm going to bring down my two. How many times will 25 go into 62? Two times. There's 50. We subtract here and get 12. Bring down a 5. How many times will 25 go into 125? Five. Five, five times. And there we go. Not really all that. I made the numbers pretty nice and even. Right? Some of it will be similar to that. But you've got to remember the step of if you got to turn this into a whole number, and then you got to do whatever you did to this one, you must do the same to that. Okay? All right. 22, 23, 24, I just want you guys to all be aware right now, I'm going to be very fair about this. Number 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. When you get to the summative on Thursday, the last five questions 
will be exactly what you see here. Now, these might be in a little different order, these up here, just so that you can't remember that. So don't think it's going to be what is the quotient, what is the dividend, what is the divisor. They might be in a different order. But those five questions will be absolutely on the summative as you see them. No tricks. Okay. The, I might change the numbers, but that doesn't really matter. Oh. Okay. So which number is the quotient? We know a quotient is the answer to a division problem. So that's going to be 8 ninths. Which number is the divisor? Or I'm sorry, the dividend. We know that that's always the number that's being divided. So there you go, 2 thirds. Which one is the divisor then? Well, that's the number that's doing the divising, 3 fourths. A lot of you had these two flipped. We got to know that. I mean, no real learning target again. I mean, it kind of goes with one. If you want to do them on one, that's fine. But, okay, what is an algorithm? Yes. Yes. So I'm going to say it like this. A step by step process. You may want to write this. It'll be on the summit if I can't make it any easier, guys. It will be just like this. Define algorithm. A step by step process to solve a problem. Just like that. What? Nobody should miss this on the summative, guys. I'm saying it right here on the video. It's on. I made a Quizlet in the Chapter 3 folder. It's on there. These two are on Quizlet. Okay, these, these three are on Quizlet. Okay, you got to be able to, got to know them. Okay, um, using the words dividend, divisor, and reciprocal. Now, the one thing I'm going to accept here is if you didn't use the word dividend, I'm okay with that. Because that's kind of not, that's not really how I taught you. I taught you this. Division is... You may want to write this, is just multiplication, multiplication by the divisors reciprocal. No, because I didn't, I mean, if you were going to add dividend in there, you could say division, division is just multiplying the dividend by the divisor's reciprocal. You can do it that way. But right there, you had to have that. That's what. I, that's the way I've taught you. That's the little thing that you guys have memorized every time I say division is just. Um, that's what you need to have. Okay? Everybody flip to the front. Oh, that back page is out of 13, I think. Isn't it? Or no, it's uh, 8 plus 7. It's 11. It's out of 11. I need everybody real quick here to put what you got out of 26 on the front.